Hello students, welcome to today's video lecture on personal financial planning. Personal financial planning is not just about budgeting or paying bill. It covers a comprehensive approach to arranging your finances to live comfortably, to achieve your goals and ultimately secure your financial future. This lecture will equip you with the knowledge and tools necessary to make informed financial decision. So what is personal finance? Personal finance covers everything in your life that involves money. It extends beyond mere budgeting or managing expenses and covers all aspects of your financial life including earning, spending, saving, investing and protecting your money. The most important aspect of personal finance is personal financial planning. It involves arranging and organizing your financial resources to meet your present and future needs. The goal of personal financial planning is to ensure a comfortable lifestyle, financial security and achievement of specific objective. These objectives are known as financial goals. It vary from person to person and may include milestones such as obtaining a college education, buying a car or starting a new business. For example, financial goal of getting higher education requires careful planning to cover tuition fees, accommodation, textbooks and other related expenses. It may involve exploring scholarship opportunities, researching student loan option. Similarly, the goal of purchasing car would require evaluating affordability, uh, researching financing options and considering financial cost involves in maintenance of the car. Furthermore, financial planning encourages individual to consider long term goals such as starting a business. Starting a business requires financial analysis, market research, understanding potential risks and creating a strategic plan for sustainable growth. Through these examples, uh, you can grasp the significance of personal finance in various aspects of your life and understand importance of planning, budgeting and making informed financial decision. What is the benefit of knowledge of personal finance planning? Having a knowledge of personal finance comes with many benefits. First, it enhances your effectiveness in obtaining, utilizing and safeguarding your financial resources throughout your life. By understanding the principle of personal finance, you can make informed decisions about earning, saving and investing. Additionally, this knowledge will empower you to maintain control your finances, help you in avoiding excessive debt means loan, bankruptcy and dependence on others for financial support. Financial planning process. Let's discuss the process of financial planning. This typically involves six steps. The first step is understanding your current financial situation. This includes your income, expenses, saving and loans. Next, it is essential to define your financial goals such as buying a car, owing a house or planning for retirement. Goal setting requires careful deliberation and it will be discussed further in separate lecture. To achieve your financial goals, you need money which comes from your savings and investments. There are various investment options available like bank deposits, shares or stocks, mutual funds and government securities called as government bonds also. Evaluating these alternatives and deciding the best option to achieve your goal is crucial before implementing your plan. Implementation involves putting money into the chosen investment instrument wisely. Wisely word is very important. However, your job doesn't end with implementation. To ensure successful planning, you must periodically review your progress and make adjustment when necessary. Regularly tracking and evaluating your financial plan will keep you on the right track 
towards achieving your goals what is your current financial situation understanding your financial condition is the first step in financial planning the state of your money as a whole is shown by your financial status how much you make means how much you get how much you spend how much you save and how much you owe to other people you can begin financial planning once you have this clear cluster image in your hand develop your financial goals when setting financial goals it is important to ask your, yourself some important question that can help you to make better decisions first think about whether it's better to spend your money now or save for your future this helps you to understand your priorities and consider benefits of saving and investing for long term rather than just spending for immediate pleasure another question to think about whether it's whether to start working right after graduation or continue your education this question is very important for you this helps you to weigh the pros and cons of earning money immediately versus the potential benefit of further education and better career opportunities in future it's also essential to understand how your personal values impact your financial choices everyone values are different so you should align your financial goals with what truly matters to you for instance if you value experience experiences and personal growth you might focus on saving for travel and investing in self improvement opportunities for some people car is important for some people house is important so thus the priorities differs from person to person remember everyone has different priorities and that's okay don't compare your financial goals with others as what's important to you may not be same for someone else for one person buying a car may be the priority while another buying a house could be more important more significant it's about understanding and appreciating the diversity of financial goals and decisions people make another aspect of financial planning is uh, able to differentiate between needs and want differentiating between needs and wants is crucial needs are essential for survival such as food shelter and clothing while wants are things we desire or would like to have by understanding this distinction you can prioritize your spending and ensure that your needs are met while being mindful of your wants this helps maintaining financial balance and make informed decisions about where to allocate your resources so this slide is about needs and wants so buying an iphone is a want buying a smartphone is a need the next is opportunity cost to make smart choice it's essential to know your options and understand them well let's uh, you are saving 1000 rupees every month now you have uh, few choices about this the first choice is you can keep saving 1000 rupees each month as you have been doing the second is you can increase your saving by putting an extra 500 rupees or saving 1500 rupees per month the third option is you can choose to invest this 1000 rupees in stock market buying some stocks the fourth option if you are having some loans if you have debts then you can invest half of your money and use the other half the remaining money to pay off your loans when you are deciding it's crucial to consider opportunity cost of each choice 
opportunity cost is very important concept in finance in other words think about what you might be giving up or missing out on by choosing one option over another this opportunity cost is you can say the road not taken this way you can make well informed decision that suits your needs and goals opportunity cost is what you give up when you choose one particular option so opportunity cost is very crucial in making financial decision understanding opportunity cost is essential not only in personal finance point of view but also business decisions points of point of view opportunity cost is uh, the concept Uh, or in simple term it is the cost of not choosing the next best option opportunity cost represents the potential benefit that an individual investor or businessman misses out when choosing one alternative over another in another word uh, opportunity cost is the foregone benefit that would have been derived from option not chosen considering the value of opportunity cost can guide individuals and organization to make more profitable decisions so let's take an example of opportunity cost let's imagine there is a person named x who is currently working at a company and earning a salary x has a choice to make he can either leave his job and pursue higher education for 2 years or continue working if x decides not to go for higher education the opportunity cost in the potential benefit of having that degree along with any additional salary that he might earn because of the higher degree in other words x miss out on the advantage of higher income that could come with having advanced degree on the other hand if x chooses to keep his job instead of pursuing the higher degree the opportunity cost would be the 2 years worth of salary and that he would have earned if he had continued working so the decision x has to make involves considering this opportunity cost if he chooses the higher degree he gives up the potential benefit the income from his job of 2 years if he chooses to stay he gave up the opportunity to earn higher salary because of the higher degree ultimately x needs to weigh the benefits and sacrifices of each option and decide which path aligns best with his goals and priorities let's consider another example of opportunity cost let's imagine you have 50000 rupees in your bank account and you don't need to use it immediately you have two choices you can either keep the money as cash or invest it in stocks if you decide the money wisely or if you invest your money wisely in good stocks and after a year it grows to 60000 that's quite possible earning 10000 on 50000 investment is quite normal in stock market provided 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 that you choose your stocks wisely you would have made a profit of 10000 however it's important remember that there is also possibility of losing in the stock market so there is a risk 
on the other hand you choose to keep the money as cash and didn't invest okay so you want to play safe in this case your opportunity cost is the difference between 60000 okay and 50000 that is your original amount in this case the opportunity cost would be rupees 10000 the difference between the amount that you would have earned after investing in stocks and the original amount so by not investing the money you are missing out on the potential profit of 10000 rupees this is the opportunity cost the benefit you could have gained by choosing the alternative option now how alternatives are evaluated that's important question how to evaluate alternatives so if you have an option to keep it in the bank with 7% interest and to invest in the stock market with let's say 15% or 20% returns and invest in mutual fund with returns of 10% to 12%. So how you can weigh these different options? There are various ways. You have to calculate the opportunity cost. Opportunity cost must be taken into account before comparing the alternatives. To determine which option is best for you, you must consider the opportunity cost of each. You can, to get the opportunity cost, you can find the information of different investment vehicles in online newspaper. You can also buy uh, personal finance based periodicals like Dalal Street, Money Today, Money Life. Many periodicals are available in regional languages also. To make informed decision from the possibilities available before investing, you can use websites also. There are uh, like value research online, they grow. There are many websites available on the internet to assess the different options. All these possibilities will be thoroughly discussed in this course to enable you to make informed decision. So as of now, it may seem difficult for you to uh, weigh the different options. But as we progress with the course, we will be discussing how to evaluate each and every option of investment to make financial decision. Planning your own finances requires that you take potential risk into account as well. The risk is increasing interest rate. If the interest rate increases, you have to pay more on your loan and that reduces your savings because your income is fixed. The liquidity ratio is second risk. Liquidity has to do with the turning an asset into cash. All assets such as house, home, land lacks liquidity. You cannot make money by selling house in a day. Unlike you could sell the gold and instantly raise the needed funds. Therefore, gold is more liquid than real estate. The next risk is you can become ill or meet an accident. In that case, temporarily your income will stop. Losing job because of market conditions is also a risk. So at that time, you need money to support your day-to-day -day living. Of course, all these risks are there, but there are ways and means to take care of this risk. There is a lecture on risk management in this course. We will be discussing how to take care of these risks. You can develop your financial strategy to accomplish your objectives means goals after evaluating various investments and instruments and associated risks. You must save money if your goal calls for a substantial amount of money like retirement planning or buying house. Spending less is first way to increase your saving. Spending less means earning more. In the present position, you can raise money by using options like cutting down your spending, increasing your income, getting a part-time job, work more hours at your present job or take part or take part of your current income and invest it. So 
cutting down spending is always not possible because you have certain expenses to do like groceries traveling uh, phone the electricity bills etc etc increasing your income may not be possible unless and until you change the job your income will not increase getting a part time job or working more hours at your present job is not possible for white collar jobs so uh, you have to work for late hours if you are working in mncs so part time job and working more hours is of no question or it automatically comes but you won't get paid for that so the option left with you is uh, invest your money instead of saving it so what's the difference between investing and saving that we will discuss now creating a plan doesn't ends the story you have to review your plan periodically because your demands of money change as you grow older your risk tolerance also will alter when your source of income decreases in old age you should be cautious about taking risk of investing money in stocks market or mutual fund when there is or equity mutual fund to be precise when there is a chance of losing your capital so your financial strategy will also need to evolve with your age every year you should review and adjust your financial plan make adjustment in the financial plan according to market conditions your performance of your plan and valuation of your portfolio means your investment now let's discuss about savings and investments savings and investing are many a times interchanged but there is a significant difference between these two saving is a act of setting aside money primarily for future financial needs investing is a act of setting aside money primarily for generating profits saving often results in losses and investment typically produces profitable returns saving is storing your money in bank saving account your saving account will earn you interest from 3% to 4% the rate of inflation is 6% currently in india this results in financial loss of 2% to 3% however saving ensures that you will have a source of fund when you need them so let's talk about uh, difference between savings and investment saving can be used for day to day expenses future purchases like television or smartphones household gadgets it can be used as emergency fund also part of the saving you can use for investing now objectives of savings are quite different from objective of investment are quite different from savings the objective of investment are to keep money growing its value must rise to lessen the tax burden several investments are made uh, to just reduce the tax the money is excluded uh, from tax if you invest in specific mutual fund provident funds or pension plan so your investment is an option to reduce the tax tax high value assets like house are frequently purchased using investment investment should be made with primarily primary goal of building retirement fund after retirement when your income source stops you need money for sustenance to maintain the lifestyle so that comes from retirement corpus this corpus will continue to provide you with an income even if your own income stops other motivation or purposes for investment include funding child's education or achieving particular financial ambition such as 
purchasing a luxurious vehicle see the differences between savings and investment similarities and differences both saving and investment provide a place to store money they allow individuals to set aside funds for future use of financial goals both saving and investment represent positive financial growth they have potential to generate returns on amount of money you put in both savings and investment offer return on investment invested amount you can earn interest dividend or capital gains over time the differences between saving and investments are rate of return first saving typically have a meager rate of return often not enough to beat inflation this means that growth of saving may not keep up with the rising cost of goods and services in contrast investment have a potential for higher returns but they also come with risk the degree of risk depends on the investment instrument next is liquidity saving generally have high liquidity meaning that you can easily access and withdraw your money when needed investment on the other hand may have certain restrictions or time frames for accessing funds depending upon type of investment the next is volatility savings are considered less volatile than investment they are generally considered to be low risk as are typically held in savings account certificates of deposit or money market accounts investments such as stocks bond or real estate can experience significant fluctuation in value and can subject to market volatility the last is risk savings are often considered risk free especially when deposited in uh, insured financial institution like banks on other hand investment carry varying levels of risk higher risk investment have potential for greater returns but also higher chances of losses in summary saving provide secure and liquid way to store money but they may offer lower returns investment on the other hand have potential for higher returns but come with greater risk and may have less liquidity it's important to assess your financial goal risk tolerance and time horizon of investment to determine the appropriate balance between savings and investment in your overall financial strategy the success formula for achieving financial goal is first save and then spend this is important because it helps people to secure their financial future here how you can follow the principle of first save and then spend save at least 40 to 40% 40 to 50% of your income set aside a significant portion of your income ideally 40 to 50% for saving this money can be used for emergencies buying a house planning for retirement or building financial security you can save 30% of the money that you receive after saving a good amount allocate 30% of your income for your everyday expenses this covers your bills groceries transportation entertainment and other important spendings and dedicate re remaining 20% your income to investments investing allows you allows your money to grow over time potentially giving you more income and returns you can invest in stocks bonds mutual fund real estate or other option that match your financial goal and risk tolerance by following this approach you give priority to saving which becomes a regular habit for you a significant part of your income goes towards building wealth at the same time you have enough for your reasonable spending and investment this way you can achieve long term financial stability security and reach your important financial goals so remember 
first save then spend so this is all about this lecture thank you for your attention if you have any queries you can drop an email on the following email address thank you see you in the next lecture thank you